everybody experienced pain. There's physical and mental scars. Every scar comes with memories. I'd like to welcome my guest, Derek D. Dennis, to the Change of Life Testimonies from Senator Saints Hidden Scars. Well, what's going on, fam fam? Tell me how you're feeling tonight. I'm feeling good, my brother. How you doing, brother Change? Hey, man, I cannot complain, man. It's always a blessing to be in the land of the living where we can fellowship. Hey, bro, we're going to start this interview off with you telling the people, man, where are you from? Where was you born and raised? Uh, I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky. I was born in October 19, 1971 in Louisville. I lived here until 1986 uh, when I was like 12 and a half. Moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, and I lived there until 2008 before I relocated back to Louisville uh, in April of 08. Okay. Okay, bro. That's good. That's good, bro. Hey, man, do you care what people think about you, man? Well, uh, to an extent, no. But I do care about the ones that love me and want the best for me. I do care about what they think. You know, as a young man, uh, I think... Uh, that was the biggest thing. I was always caught up with what people thought about me. So I was always uh, trying to make sure I pleased them and in the, in the process became a follower. But as I aged, as I went through some things in life, as I developed as a man, as I made mistakes, uh, you know, through trial and error, I am now at the point in my life, well, that what the general public thinks of me, I, I don't care. You know, okay. I won't say I don't care, but it, it's, it's not, something that i'm concerned with what i am concerning with is pleasing god first and foremost and to making sure that i'm the person that i have been working so hard to be because you know just going through um you know for a while like i said i was always you know taking chapters out of other people's lives which forced me to be somebody that i wasn't so now that yeah. i realize who i am and what i have to offer the only people i care about uh you know what they think about me is my family Hey, that's 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 good, man. And uh, that's always good that we, we find our way in life, man. And if a total stranger was to ask you about your char character, Dennis, how would you describe yourself? Oh, man, I say I'm a fun loving guy that uh, and if you had a need, I would give you the shirt off my back. You know, I have a big heart. You know, some people say I'm a big teddy bear. You know, I have a little bite to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, even bears have teeth, you know. So yeah, anything yeah. that has teeth can bite. So, yeah, I I do consider myself a, a big teddy bear. But, you know, if, if you, you know, if you if you take my honey, I might I might snap at you. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, man, um, have you ever experienced, man, the, the death of a close loved one, man, or, or somebody... Uh, Near to your heart, man. Yeah, yeah, quite a few people. Number one was my mama. You know, okay. uh, I lost uh, both of my parents and my grandfather and a cousin all during COVID. I buried two out of the four. So yeah, you know, losing your mama. I'm in a I lost my mama club, and uh, that's not a good feeling, man. So I just had to uh, shake a guy's hand today at church and tell him, you know, with tears in my eyes, man, I'm sorry mm -hmm. about the loss of your mama. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you only get one of them. You only you only get one yeah. of everything. You know what I'm saying? You get yeah. one mama, one daddy. You might get a couple grandmothers. Grandmothers is the, and cousins and aunties and uncles are the one things you can get multiples of. Yeah. But you only get one mama and you only get one daddy. True, true. That's true, bro. Hey, man, do you think um, bad company uh, corrupt uh, good character, man? When you was growing up, the people that you hung around, do you think some of them kind of influenced you and took you down a path? that wasn't always the right path that you wanted to go. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, iron sharpens iron, man. You know, my mama used to say, my pastor used to say, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. I mean, yeah, I was <laughs> a follower. Good. What kid is not a follower when they're trying to figure out who they are, they're trying to blend in, they're trying to dress like, you know, the homeboys down the street, uh, the homegirls down the street. So yeah, and I can't say that they took me anywhere. It was a choice. You know, they didn't they didn't put a gun to my head. They didn't threaten me. I did it willingly. And so willingly, I was going to learn some things because of those decisions that I made at a young age. Yeah. I mean, I put myself in some crazy situations here. I was a star football playing wrestler at Bishop Lewis High School. 
and I'm hanging with guys that at, at two, three in the morning on the corner of John and Pontiac Street for what? I ended up mm. getting arrested. I ended up getting arrested. Everybody that was doing the dirt, they let go. But because mm. I had never been arrested and I didn't have a criminal record, I was the new target because wow. arresting them was going to do nothing. But arresting me was going to give them another feather in their cap because this was somebody new that had never really, you know, done anything that wasn't out here in the streets. So I was curious, you know, I, I was curious to them, like, hmm, who is this kid? We ain't never seen him before, you know, so we're going to arrest him to see what he's about. And when they realized that I didn't have a criminal record, I wasn't, I didn't live the life that I was pretending to be. So I was definitely a follower. So I can't blame those guys. They were doing what they would normally do. And it was up to me. And my mama made sure she would come looking for me in her nightgown to make sure <laughs> that I wasn't out there doing stupid stuff. Cause she knew, she knew she yeah. was my mother. She knew I was yeah. impressionable. She knew I was yeah. trying to make friends and blend in with the neighborhood. But yeah. she also had, she also had goals for me and she wasn't gonna let me become a statistic like some of my friends were. Man, hey, that's good, bro, that's good. A mother love, man, will sometimes put their life in harm's way. They'll show up on them, on them blocks like, give me my baby. Uh-uh, y'all yeah, can't have them. She embarrassed me. She come around the corner. If she told me to be back in a half hour and I was longer, she come in her nightgown and house shoes. She Man. she embarrassed me, and I appreciated that because it kept me out of jail and it kept me out of the casket. Hey Amen. Amen. Hey bro, ain't no love like a mother's love. That's Derek it, D. Dennis. Hey man, this is the four H moment. Man, road to recovery. We're gonna talk about hurt, help, hope, and healing. We're gonna start it off with the first one, man. Hurt. What is a major hurt, man, you have went through or you've been dealing with in your life that has caused hidden scars? I think um, you know, when uh, you know, we don't always have the best relationships with our parents. And for a long time, you know, I still am it's still a question mark on who my father actually was. So I tell people when you're an adult, you either have mommy issues, daddy issues, or both. So I had a little bit of both for the first 35 years of my life. Uh, I've always wanted a father. I, I thought the father who was related, who was my dad, had passed away, only to find out through family members that I did have a father. And he definitely wasn't the person that I thought he was, so that made me doubt that he was really my blood, you know. But being without a father all those years, you know, I, I wanted to be a part of that life. Of what was it like to have a, a man in your life that can influence you and tell you some things, you know? And then as I got older, my mom and I, you know, I started to develop a certain way of thinking. So, you know, that was a, a gap between us because I didn't like what she was saying and she didn't like what I was saying, you know, and she was still taking care of me, but, you know, I, I always worked and had my own so that, when mama said get out it was time to go so i think that was one of the reasons why i joined the military because i wanted to find discipline on my own terms and boy did i find it <laughs> <laughs> so Man. Uh, my hurt a lot of my hurt was surrounding that i was such a nice guy and people took advantage of me and i mm -hmm. couldn't figure out why are people treating me bad and i'm a nice guy but you know did i come to find out as i you know uh matured and lived this adult life and got a few gray hairs and went mm -hmm. through some things that everybody was not ready for what you're ready for. So it's amazing because I even have some people kind of retro back and say, well, what happened? How come we didn't make it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't even, I don't even go backwards. I say, well, I don't know what happened, but I know what did happen is what was supposed to happen. So yeah. that was, you know, yeah. part of my hurt was being the nice guy, trying to please people, and, and, you know, and I had to learn from that. So a lot of my hurt was that and my mommy and daddy issues. Man. And um, when you was going through the the, the the mommy and daddy issues, man, and the things that you was going through, man, what's some things that you did or some of the stuff, man, that helped you during those times, help you keep moving forward, even though I well, know I've it was always, days, you know? Yeah, I've always been an advocate of church. I'll never forget this. School bus came to our neighborhood here in Louisville when I was a kid, about nine years old. And it was a vacation Bible school, all white church. We got to go look at the puppets and have lunches and had fun. And so I got the church bug from that day on. And from that point on, I wanted to go to church. You know, my family didn't go to church. 
you know, and that's okay. It doesn't make them bad people. It's just that they they had other things that that was more important than going to church. So, I I started going to church. I was getting up. I was dressing myself. I wanted to wear a tie. I was influenced by the men in the church because, like I said, I had daddy issues. So I always made friends with guys that had dads that did things with them in their lives because I didn't have that. So. Mm. To deal with those to deal with those things as I got older, you know, I started to really get uh, overly involved in the things that brought me happiness, lifting weights, um, you know, uh, being a comedian, you know, I mean, um, loving on my kids because, you know, I, I'm my too have a father of boy. So I didn't want the same thing from them as I had from myself. OK, and man, what were I mean, as you're going through there, what are some of the things you found to build hope? Once you start getting the people, what are some of the things as far as future wise? You start looking and say, hey, I want to be this. I want to do this. That start giving you more hope to try to be more successful. Like like, like I said, as a kid, when I, I got to church, but man, prayer. I always wanted to go to church. I love being around people. I excel around people. You know, if anybody okay. that knows me, you know, I could be a total stranger to your family and come there and you think I was part of the family. That's just me. That's just, I love being around people. I'm a people person. But at the same time, I'm kind of recluse. When I get home, I like my personal time. I like to just sit and think. And, um, you know, so prayer helped me. Prayer was the foundation of everything. Prayer and my spiritual life was the foundation for everything that I have now. Even if I strayed away and came back, Man, those people at the church and God opened me with open arms, man. It was the best feeling in the world. So those are some of the things that I used to cope with uh, some of my shortcomings in life. You know, nothing worthwhile comes easy and slow progress is better than no progress. So I never gave up. I never gave mm -hmm. up. So that was, you know, I fall down. I get beat up. I get scuffed up. Uh, things happen, but I never gave up. And to today, that's the thing. I, I'm, I always educate myself with knowledge because the more you educate yourself, the less issues you're going to have tripping over the same situations and circumstances. So that was, you know, that's my motivation for everything. Even when my mama died, I stayed busy. There's no book for death. There's no book on how to mourn. There's no book on how to do these things. I know the Bible talks about, you know, uh, uh, God you know, uh, here's your cries and, and has love for the broken hearted and things of that nature. But, you know, that's what I had. And I went with that. And I take that with me everywhere I go. Hey, man, hey, man, hey, that's that's good, bro. And taking, uh, taking that with you, man, and as you learn a lot of things in life, man, with prayer, what started your process of healing to where you said, OK, well, I didn't have a dad growing up. Maybe I didn't have this relationship, but what what did your process of healing look like as you was moving forward into adulthood where well, as a kid, you had become a, a father i'm sorry as a kid i connected myself with with guys that had fathers that were active in their life so i took bits and pieces from every relationship that i developed with these these guys as fathers and it helped me piece together and become the young man that i am along with my military and then along with other people the ogs on the streets you know, now I'm considered an OG, <laughs> you know, so a lot of them were giving me advice saying, no, don't do this, young blood. You have a future. So um, I, um, like I said, I educated myself. I prayed uh, and I used those things as fuel to move forward okay. in life. And Amen. so that I wouldn't make the same mistakes. I knew I would make mistakes, but I knew I wouldn't make those same mistakes. You know, yes. and I could be a witness to somebody say, hey, man, don't do that. I've been there. I can show yes. you the scars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can show yeah. you what I went through. I can, you know, when you when like I cut my hand right here through a window. I tell people, mm -hmm. don't put your hand through a window. They say, why? Because this could happen. It's yeah. a scar. <laughs> That's good. You know, and, and, That's good. And, clothes, and clothes make us look good. So a lot of our scars yes. are hidden by our clothes. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? So what I heal, man, I, I, um, uh, I'm a, I'm an observer, so I watch people. I watch what they I, I watch what they do, but I I, I hear what I, I listen to what they say, and mm -hmm. so that's more important, you know. So um, so healing comes in all shapes and forms. So you know, um, music is a big escape for me. I love music, you know. I love to sing, so 
those are some of the tools that I use other than going to church and talking with people like yourself and other, you know, a few other people that I, you know, I don't mind opening up to as well as my wife, you know, my family, my wife yeah. is, is, is my foundation because no matter what, you know, I, I can go talk to her about things and open up to her and, you know, she understands that. So, you know, so, yeah. so those are just some of the tools and the people that I use for healing. Yeah, most definitely, bro. Hey, brother, um, uh, Derek Dennis, how important is accountability, man? Being accountable for our actions when we do do some things or, or that, that that maybe we shouldn't have done or whatever, just owning up to our right and wrong. How important is accountability, bro? Man, it's so important because that's a that's a lost art, you know. Uh, people have so many more excuses when you say, hey, uh, I have a question for you. Why did you or did you do this? And they get in defense mode. So then then it becomes about the tone of your voice and, you know, and everything else and not about what exactly we're talking about. So accountability is important. You can't move forward. Accountability is a roadblock. That If you don't move it out of the way, you can't move forward in life. So you have to and think about what the what the song with Erica Badu bag lady. That's a great mm -hmm. point. You know, you're gonna break your bag carrying all those bags like this. So you gotta release those things. You gotta own up to your account. I mean, and you'll feel so much better because once you once you're really accountable for the things that you've done in life, then it's a weight off of you and you don't feel embarrassed when you see those people that you betrayed, when you see the people that you've hurt the people that you've taken advantage of. You know, I've even had to go back to some relationships because, you know, I was a comedian coming up and I said some hurtful things, but I was a kid. I didn't know no better. I was too busy trying to make everybody laugh and I wasn't taking somebody else's feelings in, in consideration. So my friend Tiffany, I never forget her. She went to Harding High School and uh, she was very dark complected, but she was beautiful. And I used to make mm -hmm. fun of how dark she was, you know? And here yeah. I am as black as, I'm 11.59 myself, you know, <laughs> and here I was making fun okay. of this woman. And I came home to visit one time and I saw her and I said, hi, and I hugged her. And she looked at me. She says, I'm mad at you. I said, why? She said, because you hurt my feelings. You used to talk about me so bad. And I hugged her and I apologized so sincerely man. because it's the little things like that, man. Accountability, man, that when somebody calls you on your mess, you don't make excuses. And you said, you know what? I was wrong. I messed up. What can I do to make it right? Amen. What can I do hey, to make it right? Hey Amen. That's good, man. And with that accountability, man, we all make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. So what about forgiveness, man? What about forgiving people and people forgiving? How important is forgiveness, bro? Ooh, that's, that's you know, God's still working on me in that area, man, because, <laughs> you know, I, I realized the older I've gotten, the more sensitive I've become in certain things, you know, because I know how hard, I've worked to become the man that I that I wanted to be, and I'm still evolving. You know, by default, you're evolving. You're growing old. You you're getting gray hairs. You you're getting aches and pains. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, that is so important to um, just existing mm -hmm. and and becoming a better person. So yeah, yeah. I forgiveness. Forgiveness, you know, they said it, it doesn't help them. It helps you. You know, as some yeah. people say, you know, you don't do forgiveness. It's like drinking poison, not expecting to die. You know, you have to get it off because it eats you up on the inside. You have to forgive him, even if it's something as simple as handwriting a letter. I think I think what most people, everybody's different. I don't if I don't if I don't have contact with the person or I can't reach out to him, I will try that. But if they don't want to talk and forgive me you know i'm trying to forgive them then i've made my you know i've made you know my attempt and and i just have to be okay with that i don't have to have somebody in front of me to give for forgiveness to work i can do it a phone call through a letter you know sign language any forms of communication and more importantly through prayer because Man. i can forgive through prayer and then next time i see them people and you know they be like oh man he's speaking to me What's going on? What happened? I did this yeah. and that to him. It doesn't matter. And a lot of things that we're angry about is things that happened to us when we were kids. And we took it and carried it over into our adult life. True. So I, I can't afford to be upset and angry with people everywhere I go. So a great example is if you're walking down an alley and there's a dog in every yard and you stop for every dog that barks, 
you'll never get to where you're going. So forgiveness is every dog in that yard is forgiveness. You got to say, I forgive you and keep walking until Amen. you get to where you're going. So forgiveness Amen. is every dog in that yard that you got to get by because they're going to bark. Yeah. You know, so you've done something to somebody, they're going to bark. Yeah. You know, so, so forgiveness benefits me and it allows me to become the Derek Dennis senior that I'm supposed to become. Amen. Amen. That's good, bro. I, I know um, us as men, you know, we, we have a lot of pride, man. And sometimes we don't want to humble ourselves, brother. But I just want to ask you, man, when was the last time you cried, man? Oh, man, just the other day. I was uh, listening to a group called Commission. The Ordinary Just Won't Do. And there was some words in there um, that just really resonated with me, man. And, you know, um, I think I cry more now than when I was a, a teenager and a young man. Because I realized the just uh, the benefits, the medicinal benefits of crying tears. Women are great at this. They cry and have little girlfriend groups and everything and get it out. And you don't you feel so much better when you cry? You feel like yeah. a load is lifted off your shoulders and your mind. You know, not saying that the problems are gonna go away instantly, but you're heading in the right direction. So yeah, I cry all the time, man. I cry when I think about my kids and the mess that they have to deal with in this crazy world. You know, I, I think I cry more about other people than I do for myself because okay. I'm not the type of guy that feels sorry for himself. I'm the type of guy, like I said, if if the shoe don't fit, I try on another one, you know, until we get where we need to go. If, if something doesn't work, I get up and, and I try it again. I, I mm -hmm. might be down for a couple of days, but I don't give up. So, yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen, bro. That's good. That's good, man. Hey, brother, um, Derek Dennis, if you had to tell your 18 year old self something, man, what would you tell? That um, Derek, uh... give me a second real quick. <laughs> you know, that you didn't always do everything right. Uh, some things you didn't know. So when you don't know, you don't know. Uh, but I'm glad that you didn't give up, brother, because, you know, your big, kind heart and, and your love for God and people led you in the direction you were supposed to go. You made some mistakes, but that's part of learning. Um, you lost some uh, some great people in your life, some relationships. You know, we always, you know, um, in our mind, uh, you can't have regrets when you got God on your side. You know, you can't have regrets. You have to. Once you make that decision, you have to be man or woman enough to stick with it and, and just move forward and accept accept what it has to offer. So as a young man, you know, I tell myself, you you did great things, man. You lived life. You know, you were learning. Uh, some things were not your fault. Some things were. A lot of it was because of immaturity. You didn't know. You didn't have the tools that you thought you had to move forward in this life and this world. But now as a 52-year-old man, you have lived life, you experienced some things, you understand the mistakes you made, and nobody takes it personal. But the good thing is you're still here, you're still proving God loves you, and so do I. Man, that's good, bro. That's good. Hey, bro, what do you have on your um vision map, man, for the next one to five years, man? Mm. Well, you know... um with the situation that happened to my son receiving 80 years in prison, um, I've now been uh, practicing the LSAT. Uh, I'm thinking about becoming an attorney. I already have a college degree, a bachelor's degree in organizational leadership and healthcare. But, you know, when I see injustices, I'm not saying he's, he's not guilty of something, but when I see some of the gross negligence in the court system, I still feel like I can make a difference in this world. And I know I'm a man of many talents, but law is something that I'm thinking about pursuing and it's heavily on my mind every day. So I think that's something that uh, even at the age of 52, that, uh, you know, uh, something I'm looking into seriously. Amen, amen, bro. Hey, that's good, that's good. Hey, um, uh, Derek Dennis, man, What's a positive word of encouragement, man, you can give to any of the young youth or, or the old man, young man, somebody that's going through some stuff right now, man, and they just want to give up on life, man. They don't know what to do, man. What's mm. a word of encouragement you can give to them, man, to let them know, hold on, this too shall come to pass. 
Well, um, I think the one thing that I use the analogy always is sports. You know, when a team's not winning, you know, and they're losing, the first thing the coach says is we're going to go back to the basics, fundamentals. Amen. What got you to what got you to winning? So what you do, what you have to do in any time in life when things are not going your way is you have to really take a hard look and reevaluate. What am I doing? What should I be doing? You know, you'd reevaluate your finances, your friends, your family and your focus. So sometimes uh, I tell people, because that's what I do when, when something when I keep bumping my head. I'm like, Man, well, <laughs> is it me? You know, what am I doing wrong? What mm -hmm. am I doing wrong? So that puts me in a mind frame of trying to search and seek. And I, and I, I first thing I do is say, God, you know, what am I doing wrong? You know, I mean, this is something's not right. And, and I need to get clarity on the situation. So prayer is number one for me. Then you got to have yeah. patience because it's not going to happen overnight. You got to have patience to figure out why things are not working. And then, um, you know, once you do prayer and patience, and then you have to come to terms with the results. And so that's peace. So yeah. you have to come to terms with result. And then you got to develop a whole new game plan and change, you gotta change the channel, man. So let's say for instance, you're fishing and you're not catching nothing, right? True, so true. Sometimes you might have to upgrade your pole, your bait, or change the location of the lake where you're fishing if you're not catching man, anything. So I apply those same techniques in life. You gotta get up and move and do something different because if you always did what you did, you're gonna always get what you got. Man. So, and you know, um, so yeah. Yeah, and my and my favorite scripture. I know you hadn't asked me this yet. But yeah, yeah, yeah. As for me and my family, we will always praise the Lord. For me and my house, we will praise the Lord. So that's something that's important, you know. Because I'm a praying man. I pray before I eat. I pray before, you know, whether it be um, just anything new of the unknown. Because I want God to go ahead of me, which He's already Amen. done anyway, and clear the way. You know, even, even the police sends a sends a uh, you know what they call a forward observer in to make mm -hmm. sure the coast is clear. So I want God to be there for me <laughs> in every step of my life. Hey Amen. Hey, that's good. That's good, Derek Dennis. Hey man, now we're going to talk about you, man. Tell the people about your career, uh, about some things about you, man. Some of the things you do, some of your talents. Tell the people a little bit about you, man. Give them your email if they want to reach out to you, man. Uh -huh. Just give them some more information about Derek D. Dennis Sr. Well, you know, as a kid, they used to say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> now that's changed. <laughs> now it's good to okay. be knowledgeable in multiple things. Now they call that multiple streams of income. So uh, first of all, um, at one point I was a Jefferson County uh, Sheriff uh, here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and then I was as well, I've been an EMT for 15 years, emergency medical technician for 15 years. I have been physically worked for them since 2015 actively, but because of that, I started a business called Don't Be Ordinary CPR, AED, and First Aid Training, where I teach CPR first aid to the medical community, college students, and the general public. Um, I am also teach, I also do taxes. It's called Do the Math Tax Pros. Uh, between January and March, I mean April, uh, I do taxes for small businesses and uh, personal taxes as well for and personal individuals and families. And... Um, I'm a notary. I've been a notary for seven years. I'm a signing agent. So I witness uh, the signing of important documents for people doing transactions, whether it be for homes, vehicles, power of attorneys, last will and testament, things of that nature. And then most recently, I am a real estate agent with Keller Williams, Louisville East. And uh, I call myself Derek the Realtor, where I help first time home buyers, investors. Uh, and also I do uh, commercial real estate as well. So I have a, a plethora of uh, things that I do. I'm very busy. Uh, I'm HR. I'm, you know, I'm accounting. <laughs> I'm the marketing. I'm the president and CEO of all these businesses. And some of these businesses, my wife and I are co-owners. And so, you know, it takes a team. It takes a village, man. And, and you really, you know, you really have to trust the people next to you for uh, as part of your success because you you. You know, no man is an island by himself. And, and sometimes to go to the next level, you have to connect with people and give them access to your baby. You know, you can't be feared that somebody's going to take what you know 
and steal it because nobody can take what you know. You know, if, if I give you my shoes, brother change, and you, you switch the <laughs> shoestrings, guess what? They steal my shoes. <laughs> you just put new shoestrings in. They steal That's my true. shoes. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So I'm not afraid to take a chance on people so that I can grow and evolve because this is not about me. Everything yeah. I do, all my skills and ability are supposed to help other people. Yeah. I mean, once you, once you get to people your email, your, your telephone number, something. So if they did want to contact you for CPR, they want to buy a home or something like that, why don't you give them some information where they can reach out and get in contact with you? Well, I'm definitely on all platforms, whether it be TikTok, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Thread, Twitter X. You know, I'm on all of those things. Uh, uh, my real estate, I'm on Derek the Real there at Keller Williams, Louisville East. Um, on all platforms, uh, Facebook uh, for Do the Math Tax Pros, as well as Don't Be Ordinary CPR and Signature Mobile Notary. And so, uh, and I could be reached. My main email is Derek, D E R R I C K dot Dennis, D E N N I S, at kw.com. So, um, and if you want to check out my uh, website, it's the Dennis Real Estate Group dot ky dot com. Amen, amen. Hey, that's good. That's good, brother. Hey, brother, um, Derek Dennis, this has been a good interview, bro. But I yes, cannot man. let you get out of here, man, without us uh just, just praising the Lord, bro. I was wondering, man, if you could pray us out, man. I'm gonna bow my head, brother, and I'm gonna let you pray us out if that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, not a, without a doubt. All right, brother, uh, I'm gonna bow my head. Our hearts and minds are clear. Lord, we thank you for another day. Because Lord, we know that without you, there is no me, there's no us, there is nothing. Lord, you are the foundation. You are the source of my happiness. You're the source of everything that I have, Lord. And I just want to thank you today, Lord. Continue to be a blessing and a hedge of protection to our friends, family, and loved ones and those that need you, Lord. Be whatever it is that they need at this moment right now, God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you that I'm, I'm, I'm forgiveness of my sin. I have been a sinner my entire life, but you saw fit to save a wretch like me, like us. Lord, as we continue to maneuver out this cruel world, continue to allow us to run into people that's going to give us a word to elevate us to the next level so that you can get the full joy and the potential out of each and every one of us. God, we love you and we pray. Thank you. Amen. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, brother, I just want you to know, man, I'm going to keep hugging you in prayer, man. Never mm -hmm. gives up. God is the ending and the beginning. That's God right. is with us in every chapter of our life. And all we got to do is have faith and keep on moving. God got and you, all brother. Yes, all sir. Yes, sir. Blessings. Thank you for your time, brother. I appreciate this opportunity. Appreciate you too, brother. Bless. I'm rolling weed and I can't deny Lord Jesus Christ, I don't know why You favor me through all the pain With your blood I've been ordained I ain't going back to the trap house For the case you can't take me out I'm praying daily my soul to keep Angels keep protecting me Temptations, situations, frustrations Complications, dedications, translations No cross is my motivations Up and downs, evil sounds Hell bounds, round and rounds Even though they count me out Jesus made a heavenly route I pray so, I pray so, uh, thank you Jesus for giving me life, I pray so, I pray so, for the blessing of saving my life, I pray so, I pray so, uh, thank you Jesus for giving me life, I pray so, I pray so, uh, for the blessing of saving my life. Wishing my will to listen, my strength to pray His forgiveness, they talked about me Said he ain't changed, I turned away From the hate and pain, my sons and daughters My grandkids, my aunts and uncles All my cousins, my grandmother, grandfather The chains is broken, Jesus' power I fear no evil, I fear no man His footsteps is in the sand He carried me when I couldn't walk Swoop down like a hawk Bridges burned, he rebuilt My destiny has been revealed Serve the Lord, plain and clear We're just passing through here I pray so, I pray so, uh, thank you Jesus for giving me life, I pray so, I pray so, uh, for the blessing of saving my life, I pray so, I pray so, uh, thank you Jesus for giving me life, I pray so, I pray so, uh, for the blessing of saving my life. Better watch your life. 
Plenty seeds begin to grow, evil pass, you don't know, come back to hunt you, uh oh Demons lurking, making a plot, trying to take everything you got One shot, one spot, time ticking, watch the clock Angels guard me, build a shield, make the enemy wet and yield I can feel a breakthrough, Jesus, I trust you Clean slate, pick the date, everything's gonna be okay I just know no other way, throw up my hands and begin to pray